So you guys have been requesting it and today I'm here to give you my championship predictions for how I think the table is going to be shaping up come the end of the season. Now I had to make some pretty tough decisions in this one so I'm very interested to get your guys opinions on how you think the table is going to shape up and what you make of my predictions. So do leave them in the comments down below. I will be reacting to some of them at the end of the season. I'll also be reacting to this video so we could throw up some interesting opinions in this one. I'm not expecting to get all these right as the championship is a very unpredictable league. If we do go ahead and look at the championship table this time last season this was how it was shaping up. So as we can see the top two we've got Wolves and Derby County. Fulham who went on to get promoted last season were sat 12th in the championship, 7 points off promotion. And sat rock bottom of the championship we had Birmingham at this point in time. So hey maybe there is hope for Ipswich Town. Without further ado let's get into my predictions. So coming in at the bottom of the championship in my opinion it is going to be Ipswich Town. This one's not going to come as a massive surprise really. They're currently 10 points off safety and if they are to survive this season in the championship it would take an absolute miracle in my opinion. They are better now under Paul Lambert than what they were under Paul Hurst, but in my opinion, I just don't see enough in that squad for them to keep up. They've already conceded 46 goals already this season, the worst defensive record in the championship. Scoring goals has also been a problem for Ipswich so far. They've only scored 21, and they've left themselves with a massive mountain to climb for the rest of the season. If they are to survive, it would be a massive achievement, but me personally, I just don't see it. Then coming in just above them, we are going to have Bolton Wanderers also getting relegated. Now, the whole vibe around Bolton at this point in time is incredibly negative. With everything going on at the moment, with Ken Anderson. Obviously the fans understandably aren't happy. We've had loan players going back after Bolton's financial situation is all over the place at this point in time. When I look over their squad, I'm not sure they've got the quality to stay in the league either. Under Phil Parkinson, this Bolton side can make themselves very hard to break down and they can grind out some results, but in terms of scoring enough goals to stay up this season, I don't see it. They're currently the lowest scorers in the championship. They've only scored 17 goals all season. At this point in time in the season, you need goals to stay up and Bolton in their squad, especially now they've lost Dodge. I just don't think they've got that anymore. And in the last team to be relegated in my opinion it is going to be Reading but I think a lot of people have wrote Reading off as definitely getting relegated. Myself I don't think that's the case. Under Jose Gomez I think there have been a few positive performances from them so far. They are looking to have a quite a big turnaround on the players though. There's quite a few players who are looking to leave Reading in this transfer window and I'm sure they're going to be targeting a few more as well so having a big turnaround on the players in January could go either way from them for the second half of this season. I do still feel as if they've got some goals in them. They've got fast wingers who can break on the counter attack and if Gomez is to get the best out of this squad they do have a chance in my opinion to just go ahead and scrape it I do think it's going to be very close come the end of the season but when I judge Reading compared to all the sides who I think are going to finish above them I just think there's that piece missing from Reading which I think in the end will lead to their relegation this season what do you guys think about bottom three that's what I'm predicting then finishing just above the relegation zone I'm going to have Wigan Athletic now at this point in time Wigan are on an awful run of form in the championship since they've been missing Nick Powell from their squad this team has really been lacking any sort of creativity or drive going forward and bar the game they had the 2-2 draw against Swansea City they've been looking really turgid lately for a lot of the games I've seen them so far this season their main attacking outlet has actually been their right back Reese James he's probably been their best player so far this season and it is a total contrast to the way that Wigan were playing at the start of the season the way they were going for the first sort of 10 games in the championship they were looking like they were going to be a comfortable mid-table team I don't think that's going to be the case anymore I don't think they'll be relegated as I think the three that I put below them are worse than Wigan but I think it may go close then in that 20th place I'm going to have Rotherham United a lot of people were tipping Rotherham to be go down at the start of the season myself included I think I put them at the bottom of the championship but I think that Rotherham are going alright in the championship at this point in time before the result they picked up last week they were on a bit of a dodger in the form in the championship but this team does have the ability to switch up the way they play they can play on the counter attack with some fast players they can get balls into the box and they can score goals you can also make themselves pretty hard to beat and so far this season they have picked up some pretty decent results against some of the sides who are near the top of the championship for the rest of the season I do think they'll grind it out and I don't think that Rotherham will be going down this season in that 19th we are then going to have Millwall. Millwall have been a really strange side for me so far this season because at times I've watched them, I don't actually think they've been that bad this season. They have had moments where they've been absolutely shambolic defensively but in terms of going forward, they've had moments in games where I thought they've got quite unlucky actually and they probably should be a little bit higher than this in the table. Their last few results in the championship they've been doing quite well actually. I see them being around this region of the table but I don't think they'll be going down. Then in that 18th I'm going to have Brentford, another club where I can't believe I'm predicting them to finish here. After the start they had to the season, you know at the start of the season I think I was predicting them to finish around the top six and seemingly they may have turned a bit of a corner in the championship recently they are unbeaten in the last four matches now but things under Thomas Frank at Brentford so far haven't exactly been the most convincing the defensive record has been all over the place so far this season and that's been the thing which has really been holding them back so far capitulating in small moments of games they'll have sort of a 10 minute spell where they'll go ahead and concede three goals and that's really been limiting them so far this season they have got attacking threats going forward Ben Rama I've liked the look of so far Neil Mapay whether he'll still go in January that's up in the air at the moment when Brentford are playing to their full potential they 
they can be a much better side than they've shown so far this season. But I think this one will be a bit of a write-off and a look to build on it next season. In our 17th, we are then going to have Sheffield Wednesday. Now, Sheffield Wednesday is a bit of a tough one to predict for the rest of the season. Obviously, Steve Bruce will be coming into the job on February 1st. So, the impact that he'll have on this club, I'm not so sure. He's quite a cautious manager, likes to shore up their defence. So, I think that that if anything, is what Sheffield Wednesday need at this point in time. We're one of the worst defensive records in the championship. They've been pretty much all over the place. Since Karen Westwood has come back in as their number one, though, they have been looking a lot more stable. I feel as if Sheffield Wednesday will have a bit of a meandering finish towards the season. They'll have some moments where they'll pick up, but eventually, I think they will sink back into this sort of 17th position. Steve Bruce is still going to be figuring out what his best team is, the place he wants to keep on for next year, and I think that the rest of this season for Sheffield Wednesday now is about building towards next year. Above them, we're then going to have Preston North North End. Now, Preston this season, they've been underwhelming. I'm not going to lie about that. You know, I was predicting them to finish in the playoffs at the end of this season, but with everything that's gone on, with injury records, with us not having the best summer transfer window, things just haven't worked out for Preston so far. There is a bit more positivity going around the club after some of the transfers we have brought in lately. Chris Maxwell, our goalkeeper, has just been loaned out to Charlton, so that would suggest that we are going to be bringing in another goalkeeper. Something I think is needed around Preston, with us being quite sloppy defensively so far. Hopefully, a goalkeeper will be able to sort out those issues. But I do have the feeling that Preston will end the season quite strongly with returning players coming back into the squad. Alan Brown's coming back in now. Ben Pearson's going to be back for his suspension. Shawnee Maguire's coming back into the squad as well. I feel like we'll pick up a little bit more momentum towards the end of the season and we'll finish around this place in the table. Coming in just above Preston, we're going to have Hull City. They've been on a tremendous run of form in the Championship recently. Whether Jared Bowen will stay or go, that's up in the air at the moment as well. In my opinion, I think he probably will stay. I think Hull will do everything they can to keep hold of him. Considering the amount of players that Hull lost in the summer training, transfer window. This recent run of form has really gone ahead and revitalised their season. I was predicting them to be in the round of relegation battle this season, but their recent run of form suggests that that won't be the case. I mean, at this point in time, they're only seven points off the playoffs, so who knows what's possible for Hull for the rest of this season. I do feel as if they'll drop down a little bit towards the end. They may tail off a little bit towards the end of the season, but who knows what's possible for them. In our 14th, we are then going to have Blackburn Rovers. Blackburn so far having a little bit hit or miss. They started the season very well, possibly could have been top six contenders, but lately in the championship, their form has dipped down a little bit. A couple clubs in January have been interested in Bradley Dack, but in my opinion they will keep hold of him until at least the end of the season. This is always a difficult part of the table to predict really because anywhere down to sort of 17th up until mid-table at around 8th, these squads could fall in any position really. I'm going to put Blackburn in 14th, they could easily be higher or lower. In our 13th we are then going to have Bristol City. Now Bristol City, a side who is incredibly up and down. So far this season we've seen them go on a couple of winless runs where the fans were starting to question if Lee Johnson was the right man for the job, but as of late they've been on a fantastic role in the championship. And their defensive resilience has been something that's really impressed me about Bristol City so far this season. Over the past few years since Bristol City got promoted back up to the Championship, they were always seen as a very sort of gung-ho side who would score a lot of goals but concede a lot as well. This season though, Lee Johnson has seemingly showed up that defence. They've been a lot tighter at the back this season. I think they'll finish around about 13th. Could easily be higher. It depends how many bad patches they have. Then slap bang in the middle of the Championship. I'm going to predict it to be Birmingham City. Now Birmingham are the team in the Championship at the moment who are absolutely impossible to predict. There's no way of knowing where Birmingham will finish come the end of the season. The reason for that is we don't know what's going to happen between Birmingham and the EFL. Whether they'll have a points deduction or not, that's going to be massive for determining where Birmingham will finish this season. I think the decision will be made between what's happening with Birmingham and the EFL, whether Birmingham will have a points deduction. That decision is to be made in February, I believe. And if they do get a points deduction, with how tight the championship is at this point in time, that could really drag Birmingham back down. Gary Monk has done a phenomenal job at Birmingham so far this season. With all the restraints he's been working on, with a pretty thin squad that Birmingham have at the moment as well, to be pushing up with the playoffs. They're in eighth position at this point in time. Only four points off the playoffs. Gary Monk has done an absolutely superb job. They've been screwing a lot more goals this season than they were last season but with that possible points deduction I'm going to put them in 12th. In that 11th place I'm then going to have Swansea City another side who I've been very impressed by so far this season they can be quite hit or miss. Swansea have been quite similar to Bristol City so far this season they tend to go on sort of a 5 game unbeaten streak and a 5 game winless run that's just the sort of side that Swansea have been but quite a young squad I think they are building towards the future and come next season I think if they do play their cards right in the summer transfer window next season, next season I do think that Swansea could have a real good go at finishing in the top 6. they got some really good players in there, some exciting young players who can score goals. Their link up play is very good going forward. At times, they can be a little bit slack at the back, and I think that probably will be holding them back from the teams who I'm predicting to finish above them. But Swansea, I think they'll finish the season fairly well. And then in that 10th place, I'm going to predict Stoke City. Now, the big news coming from Stoke is that they have sacked their manager, Gary Rowett. Who they're going to bring in at this point in time when I'm recording this video is not clear. But I do think that Stoke will finish the season a lot stronger for sacking Gary Rowett. Looking over their squad, there's so much potential in there for them to be doing better 
better things than, than what they're doing under route so far this season. It's been a very bland, negative style of football that's not worked out for Stoke at all so far. That squad is more than capable of pushing for the top six come the end of the season. It's going to be important who they do bring in as their new manager and just to allow more creative freedom inside the final third. they got some fantastic options in there if they're not looking so restrained. We'll wait to see. Stoke could be a bit of a dark horse for the top six maybe, depending on who they bring in. In at ninth place, I'm then going to have QPR. Now, QPR really have been one of the stories of the season so far. What an unbelievable season they've had under Steve McLaren. After an awful start to the season, you know, that game they had against West Brom, which I won't mention again, I promise. A lot of people were back in QPR for the relegation zone, you know. They hadn't really had a very convincing summer transfer window, in my opinion. But after the loan players they brought in, they've really surged up the championship. And who knows what's possible come the end of the season. They brought through a lot of young players this season. Ez has really stepped up. Joe Lumley has been fantastic after they lost Alex Smithies in the summer transfer window. Leitzner in defence has been excellent for them. And Naki Wells has been brilliant. And Luke Freeman, of course, pulling the strings in midfield. So this QPR side, really underrated so far this season. I think they'll end fairly well. And then this is where it gets really tough to call the championship. These last eight sides could finish in any order, really. This is where it gets really hard to predict, in my opinion. And this is what I'm most interested to know from you guys. Who do you think is going to be in the top six this season? Coming in in eighth position, I'm going to have Nottingham Forest. Now, the reason I'm going to put Forest in there is because I think they're going to draw too many games from now until the end of the season. They have had a bit of a rough patch lately under Aita Karanka, where his future was put into doubt. I don't think that's going to be right for Forest to go ahead and part with Aita Karanka. I think he is building something here at Forest. And next season I think they really should be assuming for the top six after another season of building under Karanka. But some of the performances they've had in the championship lately, especially their home games, have put up a couple of red flags, you know, losing the game 1-0 at home to QPR, losing the game 1-0 at home to Preston North End. Teams that like to come to the city ground and sit deep, Forrest haven't really found the formula to break those sides down. It's going to be up to Karanka to go ahead and find a new tactical plan to break those sides down. And I do think they will run very close for the top six this season. I think they may just fall a little bit short, but they could easily make it in. And then finishing in seventh place and just missing out on the top six, I'm going to have Middlesbrough. Now this was once again a really tough call. Middlesbrough could easily make the top six. I mean, they got the best defensive record in the championship. They've only considered 18 goals this season, which is an absolute joke. They've been really tight at the back so far, but some of the football under Tony Pulis this season has really been turgid. At times they can be slow and laboured and without any sort of pace or creativity. Whether Van Lepara will address that and Tony Pulis will get the best out of him, I'm not so sure. You know, his history would suggest, you know, he never really seems to get the best out of those creative outlets. It does have to be said that Middlesbrough out of the sides who are currently in the top six are the lowest scorers. They've scored as many goals as Reading have so far this season and Reading is sat in the bottom three. So come the end of the season that lack of goals may catch up with them and they may just miss out. Then making it in at six to the first playoff spot I'm going to have Sheffield United. They're currently sat third in the championship and maybe even pushing towards the top two. I don't think that that's going to be the case. I don't think they've got the squad depth to push for automatic promotion this season and they may fall a little bit behind where they are at this point in time but their general transfer business has impressed me so so far. Kieran Dowell, I think, is an excellent signing. He impressed me at Forest last season. And Gary Medine, as controversial as the signing may be, I think will be a good option for them. I think he'll work very well with Billy Sharp. He's an upgrade on what they already have, players like Connor Washington and Leon Clark. It's going to be important that key players are kept fit for the Sheffield United side. You know, Billy Sharp is absolutely integral to the end of their season. I do see them finishing in the top six. Chris Wilder has been an absolutely phenomenal manager for them. Then finishing in fifth, I'm going to have Aston Villa. I do see Villa finishing in the top six come the end of the season. They're currently sat a few points below in 10th position but I do think that with returning players coming back into the squad Jack Grealish is going to be massive for them come the end of the season you know when uh, this bad run of form that Villa have come under lately it's no surprise to see that that's come when Jack Grealish has been out of the side he's their creative outlet going forward he's able to make space for others and his importance to this Villa side really can't be underestimated as well as that it is now looking like Tammy Abraham is going to be staying at Aston Villa in one of the most bizarre transfer stories we've had in the season so far it is looking like Abraham will be staying at Villa that's going to be a massive boost for them they've also signed a goalkeeper and a centre-back, two positions they are in dire need of. They're going to have more strength and depth than some of the other sides at the top of the championship. They've got some fantastic options going forward and coming into the, the season, I think it'll be the top six for them. In our fourth, I'm then going to have Derby County, a team where I do see them finishing in the top six. Maybe not as high as fourth, but I do think they will be in the top six come the end of the season. At times, they can be a little bit inconsistent, but when Derby are playing at their peak ability, they are a fantastic side to watch. They've got some brilliant options going forward and you've got to say, this is probably Derby's best chance of promotion now, you know, considering some of their best players alone. Players like Mason Mount and Harry Wilson, two integral figures to this Derby squad so far. Derby have a better chance now of getting promoted than ever before, really. They're able to switch up the way they play. They've scored some fantastic goals already this season, and come the end of the year, Frank Lampard will do well for them, I think. And then coming in at third place and just missing out on the top two. This is really tough. I'm going to have Norwich City. Now, don't get me wrong, Norwich have had a phenomenal season so far. I think I was 
predicting them to finish around 14th this season. I really wasn't expecting much from Norwich. After the season they had last year under Daniel Farkett, it was very underwhelming. They weren't brilliant to watch. But all that has been flipped on its head this season. They have been absolutely electric going forward. You can't rule them out of any game and their transfer business has been absolutely phenomenal. More than anything, I'd like to see Norwich go up really because of the way they've gone about, you know, this promotion push. They've not spent a fortune. They've been very wise in the players they've invested in. They've also given chances to a lot of their youth players this season, the players who have really stepped up to the mark as well. And the only reason I'm predicting them to fall just short is because because of some of their laps in concentration defensively and come the end of the season conceding that amount of goals probably isn't sustainable. I know that West Brom have conceded the exact same that Norwich have so far this season but as of late West Brom have seemingly shored up their defence. And then in that second place I'm going to have West Brom the top scorers of the championship so far. If they keep up their form till the end of the season they all have scored over 100 goals and for a side to score over 100 goals and not finish in the top two I mean that's unheard of really. Defensively they've been looking a lot stronger in recent weeks since they've introduced Gareth Barry back into the squad. I think they've looked better. Mason Holgate will be a good sign for them as well. And having the attacking threats that they do, the likes of Dwight Gale, Jay Rodriguez and Harvey Barnes, they will wreak havoc for the end of the season. And come the end of it, I think they will just sneak into second place. But then coming in and winning the championship, in my opinion, it is going to be Leeds United. In my opinion, they are the best side in the championship. The only reason I can see for them not making it into the top two or not winning the championship is the lack of squad depth in this squad at this point in time. They have the chance to address that in January, but it's not looking too likely that they're going to be signing many players really so the only thing that I can see holding this lead squad back is going to be that lack of squad depth when they have got their best 11 out there I can't see anyone catching them they have been on a little bit of a dodgy patch lately in the championship they've lost their last two matches but I do think they will have that bounce back ability under Bielsa so far this season they've created a system which is so hard to go, go up against they're brilliant pressing the ball and they're brilliant on the ball they create a lot of chances going forward and can be absolutely ruthless in front of goal players that they're going to need to keep fit for the remainder of the season people like Pontus Jan Pablo Hernandez, Calvin Phillips and Kamal Roof. All those players, the span of this lead squad needs to stay fit for the remainder of it. It has been a little bit of a trend with Bielsa squads to have a little bit of burnout towards the end of the season. So it's going to be interesting to see if this lead squad does fall into that category. But already this season, we've seen this lead squad being hampered with injuries and they've still been able to ride that out, carry on picking up the results and they are still sat top of the championship. So my prediction, Leeds are still going to be winning it. So as you do see on screen now, guys, that is my championship predictions for how I think the table is going to be shaping up come the end of the season. Do you guys agree with my predictions? Let me know down below. Well guys, I will now wrap it up for this video. So if you're going to enjoy, make sure you do leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you do subscribe for some regular championship content. Leave in the comments down below what you think is going to happen for the remainder of the season. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.